Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's fountain pen review is of a pen I'm going to dub Calumum Ignatum or Unknown Pen. It's from a brand I've never heard of and I can find no information about. Admoc. I've tried reversing it, but Comda doesn't sound any more promising. Some anagrams were fun uh, with damn, okay, and mad, okay being the most appropriate. What I can say about it is it's acrylic and it's blue and it has a Schmidt nib. No, that's not a judgment. It's a brand name. Not a brand name I hold in high esteem, but at least I recognize it. Although I do not own a Moonman M100, this pen looks remarkably like it. Wait, take the M-O to make Moon. Moon. Dak. Moo. Moo. Dak. Dak. Dak, 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 a dak. I don't know. It could be from Mars. Well, let's find out right now. And now the mystery package. This has been out and about, as we say in Canada, and uh, been knocked about as well. Let's open it and find out what it is. Not exactly the best packaging in the world, I would say. And there's the pen. This is an ad mock. I don't know whether that's spelled forwards or backwards. Uh, I've never heard of it before, but it looked like an interesting resin. It's got some chatoyancy to it. Uh, Interesting clip. It's rather chunky. Chunk, chunk, big chunk. Chunky. Thick, thick, thick chunk. Chunky. Open wide for chunky. And what kind of a nib do we have here? Aha. Yeah, this is why I bought it. Even though I've the only Schmidt I've ever owned, I never use because it's a POS. But this one might be interesting. It's a German Schmidt nib in fine and some really interesting resin. Nice section and a cartridge converter, standard international. I will clean this one out and we'll have another review. So here is the Admoc Deep Sea Blue fountain pen. What I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and some measurements, and provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, stay tuned as I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. Overall, we have a cigar-shaped pen in the classic form of a Schaefer Balance with a gold-colored clip and a very pretty and chatoyant blue marble acrylic resin. Both the cap and the barrel are pointed with no finials or rings and the very stiff gold colored clip extends from inside the cap. The clip seems well made as it isn't folded metal and doesn't have any sharp spots to snag clothing and has a nice rounded tip at the end. The cap tapers up from the point to about here and then is straight for the rest of the cap until the end where there is a very smooth rounded edge and no cap band. There's a small rounded step down to the barrel and the barrel is straight until about here where it tapers away to a matching point. Overall, a very pleasant looking fountain pen. The cap unscrews with one and about a half turns to reveal a tapered section that is the same acrylic resin as the rest of the pen with a small flare towards the end right here. And we see a number five size gold colored steel a fine nib. A step down from the barrel to those threads is not very large, but it is sharp, as are those threads. The section is long enough to allow you to write without touching the threads, uh, but the taper makes it very narrow towards this end, towards the nib. And it's a good thing that there's a flare right there. Let's take a closer look at the nib. 
The nib is very attractive in this gold color which matches the clip nicely and makes the whole pen very elegant looking. We see a lot of scroll work and a script F inside some more scroll work and then the Schmidt Iridian point in block letters all engraved. And here is the plastic feed. I have to say here that this nib is too small for this pen. A number six size nib would make this pen visually more balanced. But the fact that it is a German nib gives some value added to this pen, I suppose. The section unscrews and we see a typical inexpensive converter. The good point is that it's a standard international and this will take standard international cartridges as, as well but it will not take to piggybacked. The inside of the cap shows a step milled into the inside which should seal the nib to keep it from drying out. However, this pen tends to hard start even when only left overnight. So I'm not sure that that section actually lines up with that ledge. We also see a small, what looks like a Phillips screw made of nylon that holds the clip in place. The cap posts securely and doesn't back weight the pen at all. The pen is comfortable in the hand unposted if you grip closer to the nib like this and don't mind the narrow section. Posted, for me anyway, the pen feels much better balanced and allows me to hold the pen back here with my thumb behind those threads and cradling the, the smaller grip section with my fingers and writing with it like this is very comfortable indeed. Your mileage will vary, of course, because your hands are all different sizes. I can see from here. Well, I see Shmuel and Trisha and Betty and Cheryl Ann and Alexandra, and of course I see you. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Admock Deep Sea Blue Fountain Pen with a Pen BBS 308 Galaxy with a Pen BBS 480 Galaxy. with a Faber-Castell Loom Blue and with a Fullywen 017 Blue. Let's look at them posted. And here they are posted and I wanted to show the Admock up against a Pen BBS 308 because that's a number six nib right there. And just imagine that nib on that pen that would make it that much better. And now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Admock Deep Sea Blue and it is a fine steel nib and the ink today is Robert Oster Blue Water Ice. Let's check the wetness. It's actually decently wet for a fine nib. I should also mention here that when I was trying to do this writing sample, I had to pause and prime this feed. It was dry, dry, dry just after doing the, uh, the size comparisons and leaving it out that long. I capped it right after that, immediately started the writing sample and the nib was drier than toast. I had to run a couple of drops into some Kleenex to get it running and then it's fine but then you leave it sit for a minute and it dries out. 
something to know. And here is the swatch for Blue Water Ice. It has a really nice pink sheen to it, which is very pleasing. I don't know if you can catch any of that. And here it is with Hiroshizuku Kanpeki, one of my favorite, favorite inks, and Diamine Asa Blue. And as to line variation, it's a very thin line, no pressure. But you notice I'm getting some line variation out of it. Very interesting. It's not something I would push. It's certainly not a flex nib. But uh, if you want to push it a little bit, it does give up some line variation. But this is a very fine line. From now on, I'm going to compare the line a nib produces with Richard Bender's line width chart. Uh, you can get this online. I'll put a link to it uh, in the description. Um, but he shows the thickness of various lines uh, in a chart. And I'll reference that. And this one um, makes a line that is 0 0.3 millimeters thick or 0 0.012 inches in width. And on Richard's uh, chart, he shows that is a Western XXF or what he calls an accountant nib or a Japanese fine. And to our writing sample And some reverse writing. It's not scratchy, but it's just no flow at all. So that's not going to happen. And some quick writing. As you see, the feed is keeping up very nicely, but it's a fine. What would you, what else would you expect out of a very fine nib? So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I'm actually interested in my own reactions to this pen. Why did I buy it? Why didn't I buy a Moonman M100? Could it be that this one was only four bucks cheaper? Here is the sale for the Admoc. And here is the M100. The one on the left is the Galaxy type color. It could be that this Galaxy like finish is never in stock in the Moonman M100 and the other colors don't thrill me quite as much. But I do remember thinking when looking at the M100 that I didn't want that number five Moonman nib. Perhaps the fact that this came with a German nib, albeit a, a Schmidt nib, might have tipped the scales in favor of the Admoc. It might also be curiosity about the unknown, the Calumum Ignotum, or unknown fountain pen. Once I got it and had been writing with it, um, I tried hard to dislike it and was expecting the nib to be, well, Schmidt. But it isn't actually. It writes surprisingly smooth for a fine nib. And with this terrific ink, even the thin lines you can see I'm getting, well, maybe you can't see, but I'm getting some really nice shading, even with this very thin line. So I like the acrylic. It's gorgeous. Not as beautiful as my Galaxies, but beautiful. I like the way the pen feels when it's posted. I can actually write with it when it's posted. Unposted, not so much. It tends to dig into my thumb when I'm writing, right there where the threads are sharp. The pen is light and I think visually elegant. 
What I don't like so much are two things really. I don't like the size of the nib or the size of the line that the pen makes. Those are two pretty big things, I think. Of course, I knew it was a fine when I bought it, but I get duped lately by the lovely line I get out of my mini food a Waverly style nibs from pen BBS and, and others that pretty much write like a medium. This is a real Eastern fine nib or Western extra, extra fine. If you dig writing with needles, you might really enjoy this pen. It lays down quite a good deal of ink for a needle point. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. this.